Hey, welcome to Tough Guys. On this episode, we are actually gonna be building a new farmhouse dining room table. Let me show you what we've started with. Um, we did get some plans off the internet. We'll like the basic idea, and we kind of started modifying it how we wanted. Uh, so let me show you everything that we got so far, and have you take a look at what we bought, and then we'll get right into building it. So as with any good project, it starts with plans. Um, these are some that we found online. I'm actually gonna put a link up to give credit to this guy here. Um, pretty good he's got material lists and he actually had some drawings of uh, you know or some photos rather of his process and I had put some notes you know things that we might need to pick up um, for this process so also he had the benches that go along with it as like a separate thing with their own material list which is pretty cool so we're just going to kind of go through our process of building it um, took into account, you know, his material list, put together my own, made notes, some tools I needed to get, and uh, that's what we're gonna do. As far as some of the things we picked up, uh, this is the stain that we decided to go with, this early American. Uh, we really liked the color when we did some tests, and then we did the triple thick poly for the top, especially for the top since it's gonna be a dining table. Um, these are some of the bolts that we're gonna use to hook up the benches together. Um, a couple boxes of screws, some of this Gorilla wood glue, we really like it. And here's that inch and a half bit that we needed to get per the instructions. And this is basically just to, you know, countersink a full depth hole to hide uh, this. So inside of the wood, I picked up another little kit of some bits because the ones that I have now are getting pretty old. And that's a pretty, pretty good overview. And the lumber, uh, we have it kind of drying right now. We got a little bit rained on, so I had it all stacked up in here and had the fans going on it. All right, got everything out that I could think of to grab as of now. We'll start bringing out the wood. All right, some quick advice here. Uh, we're trying to kind of plan out for this top part of the table. I make all my cuts. I make a list of my cuts first. I'm not sure, you know, maybe that's my preference, but I like to list them all out and then go ahead and make the cuts. You know, for example, this side needs to be eight foot long. If I just cut the side two by four at eight foot and then I put the cap on there, it's gonna be eight foot three inches long because the thickness of the boards are inch and a half. So taking that stuff into account, you could start planning out what you're gonna build before you just start doing it. You working on baby girl? Don't worry. Don't worry. I didn't forget about safety. Now here's a basic overview of that structure that I just cut out. So this is basically gonna be the underside and then a piece of plywood gets set on this and then we're gonna build a lip around the edge and the inside of the tabletop gets filled with like a chevron pattern of one by, you know, kiln dried lumber. So this is the shape that we're shooting for. And if we take a quick gander here, that is what we were trying to do. So I think it's pretty good so far. So now I'm gonna start getting this thing fastened together, just basically screwing it all together so that it's a straight structure. Now we're gonna start doing the three inch screws. Three inch screws, here we go. We got the star bits, it comes with a bit in the box. And we're gonna use a 1 8 inch drill bit to pre-drill these holes. I'm gonna pre-drill. Here we 
we go. So we're going to get the frame lifted up onto the saw horses so that we can measure out for the plywood top that goes on it before we wrap it. Man, well up to this point, we've got the frame built, not too bad. It's only been about an hour and a half or so. So we've got the frame built up. So like I said, the next part is to put that plywood piece over the top of it. And that's gonna basically give us the platform to cut the Chevron design and lay it onto. And I've also got some one by fives to kind of wrap the perimeter outside of it so you don't see the ugly two by fours. So, so far so good, let's keep going. All right, we've got the frame on the saw horses. And man, you guys can't smell it, but we've got the grill fired up. We're gonna be cooking some steaks while we're building. No big deal, don't worry about that. This is the plywood piece. We're gonna lift it up, put it on here. And this thing is, hey, what's up, man? This thing is exactly eight feet because I checked it. And our piece of plywood is exactly eight feet. So all we're gonna have to do is make a cut down one side. So we're gonna set this up there and then get the cut going. Chalk line. building a table ain't nothing better than that okay so took this piece back off I'm gonna put some wood glue onto the frame and then set it back in place before we screw it in Some quick marks on here so I can know where those those other boards were that I have underneath the frame so that I can put some screws in this thing. So I know that's where the base those base supports are right here. Mark the center line. 
All right, we've got the deckmate inch and a quarters. Same star tip. I'm gonna use these to put a bunch of screws in this thing uh, so that it's secured down. Using a countersinking bit before I put those screws in, since we have to put the boards on top of this, I wanna make sure that all those are set in place nice and good. rigid jigsaw setup. I've just got a demo blade on there. It's good for cutting wood. And what I'm trying to do, if I'm able to show this, see that lip, just the imperfect cut because I use the uh, circuit saw I'm a little bit off on this side. And then even on the factory side, we've got a little bit of an overhang. So I was more concerned about getting the, the front and the rear just ironed out. So I'm just gonna use the jigsaw to clean that edge up, and that's our next step. in screwed down glued in place this edge is looking nice it's ready to go all right here is the plans for the frame here are the plans for the frame rather again I've listed out my cuts the 4x4 and the 4x6s uh, this drawing kind of shows those look like 4x4s but these are actually 4x6s so I've got to monitor the overall width by doing that um, so let's get started cutting the rough lengths and then we'll start uh, getting these notched out. four four by sixes all cut to length um, this one actually had kind of a cool angle it's just kind of an imperfection I'm actually gonna leave that I really like it so those are the four posts for either end let's get rid of the drawing so that's these guys so now we got to make our three four by four cuts for the center supports <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, for this next phase, it actually calls for mortise joints. So we're gonna try cutting those. I've only done this one other time. It's not something I'm super familiar with, but I'm just gonna kind of go with it. So that's a stack of lumber. Four by fours are cut, four by sixes are cut. So we're ready to build the base frame of this table. All right, the first thing I did was, is I set my blade to inch and three quarter, and then I verified the depth with a tape measure as well, just to make sure that it's correct. So that's my first step and I'm gonna make some preliminary cuts. Okay, so what I've measured here is a gap that's a little bit, three and a half inches. I've added like a 16th on either side of that. This is one end. So the center stringer is gonna actually lay into this one. So as I'll have a notch on each end of the center stringer, on these I'm gonna have a notch out. So basically the notch is something like this is what this is gonna look like. Basically, this is gonna be cut out. these cut out I just need to get I'm gonna go actually grab a nice chisel set and I'm gonna get these all cleaned up so that was probably the hardest part of what I needed to do so we're gonna keep moving forward we did pick up a new chisel here at ace over by the house just a one inch chisel um, it's been working out pretty well so far um, it's getting them really really clean um, as far as the process of the chisel goes, basically just just hammering and just using the fact that it's already sharp to just slowly pop up what's here. So here's a up close of the fresh one that's been cleaned out by the chisel. So I don't have really good lighting tonight, so I haven't been able to really shoot much of this. But basically, I just take my time and get it cleaned out as I can. And I can run some sandpaper through here next uh, to get it really, really smooth if I need to. But I think for what we're doing, this is gonna serve a purpose. All right, so it is cold in the shop. Sorry for the noise, we've got that heater going. So we got the boards notched out for the four by sixes. The next thing we need to do is get the chevron pattern kind of laid out on the tabletop. Here's that center line. And again, we marked that so that we could put our fasteners in for for the uh, plywood to adhere to the frame of the table. So I need to get basically the center of this distance to this distance here. And then the same thing on this side going down in order to get that chevron pattern going. We'll get it marked at 10. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here at the edge of the table because the chalk line is actually gonna sit back this way. And 30 and 10. With the chalk lines marked, now we can start to lay out some of those template pieces and get those cut so that they will be ready to go for all the pieces that are gonna go down these two center slots.
Now here's what template number one looks like. So basically a 45 on two ends of a board. And then this links up to each chalk line that we made. So our center cut and then our side cut. So get a couple of these templates made and then one that's mirrored basically the other direction. All right, so using the template here, we've made a second cut. And basically what I'm coming down with here is a 17 and three quarter inch board cut that's straight. And then I run a 45 on the miter and then I take it to the table saw, which is preset to go ahead and cut it the other direction on a 45. So I'm gonna show you guys how I make one cut and then I'm gonna make several thousands of these <laughs> so that I can build this tabletop up. But I wanted to show you guys the process before I did it and kind of explain it. Um, I couldn't find a lot of help online for myself. So basically this is the system I've come up with. So we're starting at the miter box. We cut a board at 17 and three quarters. Then we set this over to 45, cut one end off. Then here at the table saw, we've got this set up at 10 inches. We've got the 45 set up, and then I've just been putting it up against, and I know this is matched to the template. Okay, so here's that piece that we cut, and it matches up nicely, fits perfectly on the template piece, um, and that would go either direction on here that we needed it to go. But in this case, it would just be the third cut, and lines up, lines up well. All right, so now that we've got the templates done, we're gonna make a bunch of cuts to get these first two runs done, and check back in once we get those finished up. I've got a helper that came to show up today. She's got her ears on and her eyes. And we're doing the giant saw today. The big saw today, right? Yeah. Yeah, big saw, we gotta be safe, huh? Yeah. So we have these glasses on, and I had these because, because the saw was too loud. Okay, we've got most of the boards, probably 99%, everything cut, but our leftover pieces, they don't quite reach, so we've got to run and get one more uh, of these 1x4s, but it's coming together. So before we start gluing all these down, we'll get this last board cut, set those pieces in place, and then we'll put our edge trim on. That way we have a side to you know kind of push all these pieces up against on the back side and the front side. All right, we've got a majority of those in place as we talked about. 
and we're going to go ahead and put the side rail on the piece that's going to go here along the, the sides and along the, the top and the bottom that way we can put some pressure on the sides as we fill in these last few pieces so we're going to be using uh, inch and a quarter 18 gauge brad nails to attach these through the side some wood glue and I've got the 18 gauge nailer uh, here the air nailer here is the compressor we use. It's a Porter cable. We've had this thing for a long time. Works pretty well. I normally set it at about 80 PSI. Check your, in particular, nailer. They will generally say uh, what range you need to have them at, either on the nailer itself or in the instructions. So make sure you know what you're doing there. Okay, we've got this nailed in, and I'm really happy with that line. You can see when I press down a little, it's perfect. I can sand that little tiny edge, and all the way down, it looks really good. And this will give me a nice space to be able to fit those remaining pieces. You know, once we once we get those cuts in, you can see now I can take my final cuts and really fit those in. So happy with that. We're gonna put the ones on the front and the back side, and then we'll keep going. Today we're gonna to get these last little pieces filled in so that we can begin the process of getting all these glued down onto plywood. Okay, we've got the four cuts, and now that we've got these ready to place in, then now we can measure for the remaining pieces to go in. Okay, put the last piece in. Did it fit? Yeah? What do you think? Okay, we finally have all the cuts in place, even the tiny little triangle pieces that we were trying to cut. So that's a big accomplishment. Let me show you guys what we got. Turned out pretty good. We got some gaps and some adjustments to make as we, as we get it glued down. We'll pick one side to start and basically go all the way down. So, the next step is to get everything glued in place. And that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so we took a big section of the pieces out and set them up above in the same order that they came out. And I'm gonna vac this part out, get it cleaned up really good, and then we'll start gluing them in, pulling them from, from this section down. We'll put a bunch of glue down in this area and start gluing that first couple of rows and then, and then kind of pressing them in as we go. And then I'll leave one gap out and lift and move up just like I did before. I've never done it, so hopefully this will work. got all the boards glued down and we've got everything uh, sat as good as I can get it before being sanded. So we're going to do the belt sander on this first and then come back with the wood filler to fill in all the gaps. That's the next step.
Okay, we've got the first uh, stage of sanding done with the belt sander and it's really, really smooth so far. And then we took the air compressor and the vacuum both to get all the dust out that we could. And we're gonna use some uh, wood filler to fill in uh, the minor gap. So that's the next step before we keep sanding it. And then once it's got the final uh, sand and all the wood filler in, that's when we can start doing the stain. And generally with this stuff, um, it's kind of like a, it's, it's almost like a, a Play-Doh consistency, but yet more, where it's, it's a lot stickier, obviously. Um, I normally use one bigger blade. These are my old crappy blades for this sort of stuff. Um, you want to keep this stuff moving and working it really well. So you don't need a ton of it at a time. And you're basically just going to be pressing it down into the gap. So here, for an example, um, we're just trying to get it pressed into those little gaps. And I'm going to get as much of it away as I can. So I'm basically just going to be going around the entire table and just filling any gaps that I can that are, you know, larger than just the normal gap between two pieces of wood. Um, that's my plan with the wood filler. So we're going to keep that moving all the way around. This is a good example of a, of a gap along the edge of the table. We just want to press that in. Make sure it's pressed in. And then you're going to clean it off as to not leave a ton of residual because you have to sand it out. So I generally use my hand, just kind of feel it and get it as, as smooth as I can. All right, we finished up with the wood filler on the entire table. We're gonna do uh, probably one more sand coat. Well, one sand coat after this stuff dries for about a day. And you can see I hit almost everywhere. I just tried to get any gaps that just weren't looking real good. And I'm not sure if this will pick up well in the video, but the wood filler, let that dry, and then we'll come back and give a couple more sand coats. All right, at this stage, we're gonna use some conditioner. We've got everything, um, before we do the stain, we've got everything sanded down and wood filler used and ready to go. I'm gonna show you the type of product we're gonna use for the conditioner, and then we're gonna start the staining process. So here's the product from Verithane. It's just a pre-stained wood conditioner. Um, we're gonna use that on this. It's a really soft, light-colored wood um, before we use the dark walnut stain and a couple of little brushes that we're gonna to use to put this on. You kind of spread it out and you wipe it off as you go and you gotta go pretty quick. So this is after one coat with that conditioner. It feels really good and it looks really good. Word of warning, that stuff smells uh, very, very, it's very heavy smell. So make sure you're using it in a, in your shop, you got, we grab a fan and have it blowing over here towards the door. So anyways, the next step is to get it stained. We've got the Verithane Dark Walnut. That is the stain right there that we're gonna be using. So that is the next step. Okay, so it's the next day. We've let this thing dry overnight. The next step is we're gonna sand it down with some 220. I've got a little Makita sander that we're gonna use for that. And uh, RZ mask, if you don't have one of these things, check them out online, super helpful. We're gonna sand this down and then stain it again.
Alright, so sorry for the noise. We've got the heater going. It's back down to like 35 out here. So we've got the table stained and sealed. And the next step is to get the frame pieces sanded down so we can get those inside and put it together. Alright, we've got everything sanded down uh, is the best that I'm going to do it for this. These are just going to be painted, the base pieces. Um, I've got everything set up inside the house. I'm going to show you now. We're going to take all these pieces inside and get them lined out and start putting it together. All right, so we're here inside the house and let me show you what we're working with. I've got everything laid out behind me. I'm gonna build the base inside the dining room. That way I don't have to worry about carrying it to and from the garage and something getting off. So I'm gonna show you the pieces that we've got laid out and some of the stuff that we brought in to put it together. We got our rigid impact driver, caulk gun, tape measure, the screw gun. Actually, that's the screw gun. That's the impact driver. Um, we've got our countersink tip in there and then our tip for this drill bits, screws, blade, wood putty level. And then here is the first section. That's the, the T and then these are the legs that go on either end. So I'm going to start by fastening this guy together and I'm going to be using some liquid nail, this product right here. And I'm going to use that as well as putting screws through this. And then I'm going to fill the screw holes with the wood putty. So you basically don't see anything and this whole thing will be seamless. So that's what we're going to start with. All right, guys, we've got everything set up right here. And this is that first joint. So I'm basically going to line up everything I'm going to set this to the side. And we've got that liquid nail um, ready to go. So I'm going to put a little bit of that on here. And that's just really to assist. I really want this to have a solid connection. And over time, I don't want it coming loose. And we'll start by placing this guy in. So I feel like with the liquid nail and putting a couple screws in, this thing is gonna stay together uh, basically forever. And that's what my goal was. All right, to attach the two legs, our idea is to put the liquid nail here in the other spot and then we're gonna stand up the eye structure so that way we can put some screws through the back side of it. Um, the dry fit, everything looked good so that's how we're gonna do this part. Right, so we've got this side set up. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna lean it up and set it down and press it into the liquid nail and get it screwed together. thing liquid nailed and screwed together I've got to obviously wood fill and put some shims in here um, we I really wish I would have cut some of these notches better but I'm happy with it we can always build another base um, once we've got this process a little bit more down so it's time to just get this thing inside um, so the next step is to 
wood fill all the holes from the screws and then prep it for paint and basically get this thing painted. I think it's gonna be white chalk paint with like a matte finish. So that's the next step. All right, so we got the base uh, painted up and I just wanted to show the paint. It's uh, from Walmart, it's a uh, chalk paint, just regular chalk paint from Walmart. They sell it in like the craft section. That's what we decided to use for the entire bottom and then we're gonna cover it in like a matte sealer. Uh, we didn't really videotape painting the base because I figured I could just show you what it was and painting is painting. So if you wanted to see that, sorry. We're gonna get the rest of this painted up and sealed and then we're gonna try to bring the top in and I'll, I will go through the process of attaching the top to the base. So that'll be the next step. Okay, so as we're wrapping up the table build, we've got to put these little brackets on underneath that basically it's gonna help secure the top uh, to the base. It does move just sitting on there. Like if you were to bump into it, we're a little worried that it could have some movement. So we're gonna put these on there. And then the only other note was that the actual legs here, we actually had to cut those off about three inches all the way around in order for it to work with the standard chairs that we have that could have just been something that was specific to our situation, but I built this exactly per the plans. And when you're sitting at it, your arms were basically all the way up here. It was just too tall. So I'll show a little bit of that when I go down to put the brackets on. That is the last step to go. So this is the side of the table. I'm gonna take the camera underneath the edge so you guys can see. So what happened was the way this guy had it laid out, the two by four support actually sits in on the four by six and it's the same way on the front and the rear so you've got this little this little nook right here and i apologize for the way this looks so this bracket my idea was to basically set it up inside of there and admittedly i should have put the screws going down into it prior um so that way when you take the top off you could just remove these screws and then you could remove the top and just leave these in place since i didn't do that I've got a special adapter, which is this thing. So this special bit we have from DeWalt, it actually is flexible and it has a, uh, it just fits into a normal chuck on a screw gun. Now that's what that part is there. And I'll show you how that hooks in. Um, this part is actually reversible, so you can take it off and on depending on the side that you're gonna need. On this side, I'm gonna need the handle here so that I can lift this up and drive a screw down into there and it's magnetic so basically that's going to be the game for me just like any other screw gun attachment and if we can get that to focus on there when you spin it it's just spinning just the tip I found some smaller black screws since this is not designed to be like structural and I just want it to help hold it in place. I'm going to try to get this in there and I'm just going to find the opening with my finger first. And there's one second screw in place. You can see how enjoyable this is if I had only done this before I put the top on I wouldn't have to do this is that why we called the channel tough guys Here's that other side. We've got all these in and you can see how that looks. So it's just a hidden bracket, you know, up underneath and you can't see it from the top or, or even from the sides. Um, it's totally underneath. And if I needed to take the top off, I could just remove these top three screws, leave the bottom bracket in place, and then just lift this top section up and away. And that would be fine. So we have those on all four corners up underneath the table. So, not too shabby. I also realized I had never really detailed the bottom. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out overall. Uh, it, you know, 
we could have done a little bit better on these cuts here, clean them up. It was our first time doing anything like that. And yeah, you can see one of those side ones there. It turned out pretty well, I think, considering. And there's the other side. All in all, I'm really happy with the way the build turned out. We are totally wrapped up with it. Um, one thing we didn't show was doing the seal coat on the table. We just didn't record doing it. It was been, it had been so cold. I had to get the table inside and we just had my wife knock it out. One of the days it was a little bit warmer and we got the table inside. I do have some repairs that I'm gonna to have to do to the top as it had settled, which I'm gonna show here in a second. We'll do a quick walk around to end the video. Um, so yeah, if I had anything I would change, I would have verified some of the measurements on the front end. Like I said, we had to chop three inches off of these legs, which was a bummer because it was after we already got everything inside. And uh, I had no way to know that until I sat the chairs at the table and figured out that it was too tall. Um, and I wouldn't have built it in the winter because that was a pain. And I think because of the wood expanding and contracting from outside to inside, as you'll see in an upcoming video, we've got to make some repairs to the top, but let's do a quick walk around. And that's it. That's the table, it is done. Thanks again for watching the video. If you love what we do, consider subscribing. It sure does help out Tough Guys TV. And keep on the lookout for some videos coming soon. We've got the bench for the table on one side and then we're gonna do some chairs on the other side. Uh, we'll have the video coming for the repairs. And we've got a lot of really fun stuff uh, kind of in store uh, with a lot of the, the subscriptions that we've been getting and people you know, really hitting us up on Instagram and on Facebook and here. Uh, we really have some some fun ideas coming up. So. Stay tuned and we'll catch you in the next project.